Love for call here again. So, Kingdom Trilogy. Yes, it's finally here, guys. Uh, you know, I started talking to you about it. And the Kingdom Trilogy is we took the Kingdom of God from the Lord's Prayer. And uh, the Lord gave us the vision to write these. Let me just get this here. The Lord gave us the vision, Shalewa and I, to, to spend extensive hours of research. Because why? Again, one, the kingdom was taught, uh, but a lot of the people who were taught the kingdom are not teaching the kingdom today. Two, a lot of people who were in churches that the kingdom were taught or had the tapes, the teachings, the CDs around the world, sadly didn't carry out the kingdom mandate that it should be in the earth, because if they did, when we actually, when I traveled to nations, we would have heard it there. Uh, thirdly, a lot of people are not settling their faith. A lot of people are going to church, 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 because they want something more than just an emotional experience. They want a, a lifestyle. They want to know how to get to God. They want to know how to see God. They want to know how to feel Him and how to meet Him. And they want to meet Him where He is. They want um, to be touched by Jesus. Um, they want a set of laws that work. You know, everything has laws and policy, but it seemed like many people who were following Christ in the past didn't have any law or policy. They just live life randomly. But I find this generation really wants something that's tangible. They, 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 a young man told me that, you know, he's the drug dealers. People want to be like drug dealers because they see the cars and the money and the wealth and the women and the power they have. They want to be like sports figures because they can see the money, the, the blessing, the favor. You know, people want to apply, you know, principles to the stock market and day trade and, and start to be successful. And, and so likewise, people don't just want an emotional religious experience anymore. The pandemic and all the world has gone through. People want principles that work. They want to know that, you know, Give and it shall be given unto you works. That when I give, there is a system that brings it back. That if I seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all things shall be added unto me. So, okay, I'm expecting the Lord to hold part to his word as I do my part with him. So if I seek the kingdom, if I get up every morning and I seek the king, the Lord Jesus, if I seek him, how do I seek him? Good question. Now, through the word, which is the Bible through other teachers who teach on the kingdom, if I go through the Bible. What I did personally was just go and print off every scripture from Genesis to Revelation that deals with the kingdom of God. And I began to study all of them. Shalev and I. And Shalev and I began to also get um, the, the principles of the Bible, every word of Jesus. We printed every word Jesus the king said. And we, we've gone over it. Um, we're still going over it. And we have listened to the words of Jesus for the last three or four years, multiple times. I mean, every single word of Jesus, which is over about five, six hours in audio. And in written, is like 120-something pages. And we're still going over, highlighting anything that talks about Jesus, who he is, which is nature, as king and as lord from Genesis to Revelation. And we keep doing that. And every time we do that, we're finding more and more amazing things about Jesus. We keep finding more things about who he is and what he's about. Not seeking the kingdom. When we started reading about the Holy Spirit, this person who Jesus said he will send into the earth to be our friend, our comforter, and our guide. And that's what we've been doing. And we've been sharing up with each other and our family about the kingdom. Then we begin to teach others. Then we begin to teach it online. Then we begin to teach it on television and radio around the world. And we've been traveling around the world to Asia and all throughout Africa, the Caribbean, and North America. We've been teaching the kingdom for quite some time and using all the media to get it out. And so we finally got the release from the Lord last year to write the Kingdom Trilogy. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. And so we've done this by the Spirit of the Lord. Extensive work she and I did. You know, I've been teaching it for so long, it was easy to just write it out. And she helped me to build it. We worked on it daily for months. And I so love her for her faithfulness and her commitment. 
and seeing the vision, you know. And, and so through that, we were able to reach, release the Kingdom Trilogy. Uh, we began writing, it was so much material that, you know, we had to put it in different books. And actually, the trilogy has a special bonus book that goes with it. And I'm telling you, I'm just so excited getting the graphics for it, you know, getting the concept, getting the theme. And the Kingdom trilogy is just powerful. It's for everyone of all ages, all lifestyles, to bring you to Christ Jesus, transform your thinking. I mean, I'm free from dead religion and, you know, what they taught me in church. Some is good and some I have to throw out. Some I was taught from listening to people on television, on radio, social media. I'm just blocking a lot of stuff now and checking it against the kingdom message. Uh, uh, you know, that's the real thing. Yes, you know, a lot of people don't like us because of it. I mean, you would think Jesus would be loved, but they hated Jesus for teaching the kingdom. I find that people would love to be under religion. They love being shouted at. And they love just an emotional experience only. And I love worshiping the Lord. And I get emotional with the Lord. But when I sit down and hear the teaching, I want the solid word of God that I'm going to use when I go to work tomorrow. Or the word of God if an enemy comes to attack me and my family. I know how to pray and get deliverance and breakthrough. And so, yeah, sure, I'll tell you about that. So the kingdom book is all about the kingdom of God. What it is. What is a king? How does he operate? How is Jesus a king? How is he Lord? What does he mean by being Lord and ruler? What is his idea? What's his vision and mission for his own assignment? How does that relate to you and I? How can we become a part of the kingdom? You know, John chapter 3 says, you know, 2 and 3, Jesus was alone and this gentleman, Nicodemus, a very high priest, was very studied in the word and the laws of the Old Testament. He knew the law, the prophets and the teachings. <clears throat> but he came to Jesus because he just, he didn't know what it took to get to know Jesus. He, know, he knew that Jesus was special, that Jesus was the Messiah, or the word Messiah comes from the word Mashiach, or Hamashiach, which means the anointed king, or Christ, which means the anointed king. He knew that Jesus was, based on his teaching, his lifestyle, and the miracles, and the power, and the authority Jesus walked in. And he asked Jesus, what must he do to be saved? Jesus said, you must be born again. If you're not born again, Jesus said, you cannot even experience or begin to experience the kingdom of God. So this tells you that you must be born again. How do you be born again? Nicodemus asked. And many of you might be asked too. I mean, we have to go down to the basic teachings. Romans chapter 3 and also Romans chapter 9 and 10, chapters 9 and 10, talks about us being all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And I also talk about if you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. You know, you have to confess that you are a sinner, that you're not in the kingdom, that you're lost, and that you're in need of a Savior. And that Savior is through Jesus Christ, through what he did. When he, Jesus said, all power is being given unto me in heaven and on earth after he went on the cross. And rose from the dead. Jesus on the cross said, it is finished. He said, and he talked about his blood being the payment for the remission of sin. And his body will be broken for the remission of sin and forgiveness of sin. And so Jesus' body was broken and bruised so that we can accept what he did. And accept that he is the pro payment, propitiation for sin, that he is the ransom lamb, he is the lamb of God which was slain for the foundation of the world. He was the sacrifice, and he sacrificed himself so that we can have eternal life, we can have salvation, we can be born again, we can come out of this old limited earthly kingdom, even though we're still living, but we can come into eternal life. We can come into a life applying the word of God and see transformation and live a life in the kingdom. The power, yeah. Experiencing heaven's authority. I'll tell you about the power of God. It's filled with the early people who talked about the kingdom of God. 
didn't demonstrate much power. I mean, the teaching was amazing. I know ministries where they teach the kingdom powerfully. I mean, the teaching of the kingdom was amazing. However, they stopped there. They didn't go into deliverance, demon cast out. Jesus said, if I cast out demons, then the spirit, by the spirit of God, <clears throat> the kingdom has come near you. You know, we're a deliverance ministry. We've seen demonic deliverance many times in many people. Praise the Lord. He allowed my wife and I in our ministry, Kingdom Apostolic, to see and experience that. We've trained others in it. We've equipped others. We've sent others out in that ministry. And we're still doing, the battle is still on. So the kingdom, Paul said the kingdom is not in word, but it's in demonstration of power. And you can talk kingdom all you want. You can talk Jesus and his kingdom and coming into his kingdom. You know, a lot of people, when they talked about the kingdom in the past, talked about kingdom in terms of having a great job, you know, having, you know, a big house or having money or having, uh, you know, some influence in the community, whether in a professional environment. The kingdom was, was never spoken of as um, powerful, a spiritual powerful house, a spiritual powerful community of believers in Jesus Christ who heal diseases with our prayers and our words, who cast out unseen spiritual entities out of people who pray and things happen who force the power of death and darkness of a city a nation or village away and cause light and life and wholeness and soundness most importantly who taught with such power and conviction the word of God that Prostitutes change their lives, the drug dealers, murderers, convicted criminals, Satanists would renounce believing in something else and come to the truth of the powerful being of Jesus Christ. You know, many of the pictures painted Jesus as the side thing. He is powerful. All power has been given unto him. He is powerful. Power is he has authority and he has supernatural power being to create. And, and so that's what the power book is about. It's more than just being a kingdom and saying, I'm a professional and I could have this big house, this car, this job. That's a level of power. Because in the New Testament, the two words for power is one, dunamis, which deals with dynamite power, the heal the sick, cast out devils, preach the gospel, see supernatural signs, wonders. And miraculous things happen, and also um, um, exousia, exousia, which deals with delegated power. It means in the earth, people who love Jesus and serve Him has a certain level of authority to operate. You have authority. You know, a police in um, New York City has power and authority to arrest someone. If he goes over into Chicago, yeah, he loses that power and authority because he's outside his jurisdiction. So, you know, in the jurisdiction you're in, whatever city or nation in, you have, if you submit to Jesus Christ and submit to the authorities there, because, a, a, you know, a sergeant has to still submit to a captain. So even though the sergeant could arrest and do all these things, it's only under the instruction of the captain. So that's where the church and the body of Christ comes in. Even though we're believers in that body, there is a certain uh, order of authority. The apostle, prophet, pastors, evangelist, teachers, and then all the believers work together. There's an authority structure that the Lord put in place with the apostles and prophets being the foundation of that for the power of God to flow upon all the leaders. You know. Yeah, there's a young lady who I was talking about authority and she got so upset, so angry about it because she felt she was just going to have power and authority to go out there and do anything. And I told her, no, submit to a church, submit to a leadership, work in a local church, pray, share, fellowship with the other believers there and let your pastor give you a certain level of training and development and preparation and then you can be more empowered to teach, share, um, 
with greater authority and power out there to the world. Now, everyone can share the gospel of Jesus Christ every day with anyone. But when you talk about you want to start a whole ministry or a church where people follow you, you should be matured and equipped before you go doing that. The glory, yes, I'll talk about the glory, yes. So it's the kingdom, the power, and now to the glory. The glory experience heaven's wealth. Oh my goodness, glory is not some spooky cloud. The heavens declare the glory of God. The glory, glory is from the word kavod, which means the weight, the splendor, the beauty, the magnificence, the power, the riches, the goodness. And so glory is, we are the glory of God. When you're saved, we are reflect his image and his likeness. Our wives, the Bible says the wife is the glory of the husband. The man is the glory of God. And, uh, you know, things reflect the glory. You know, uh, a painter who paints a beautiful picture. I'm looking at one right here. That's the glory of that painter, the beauty of it. You know, post-modern civilizations had kings. And those kings, some still monarchs, still exist small in this time. But the strength of the glory of a nation or the glory of a king was when you went to that king's palace, the magnificence of gold and, you know, the tile, the handcraft, the craft of the, the building, the beauty of the building, the order of the servants, the excellence, the ambience, the splendor of the robe of the king, the crown, the jewel. You know, we're all going to have that one day once we serve Jesus, the beauty because we are kings. We carry his glory. So glory is, you know, first of all, looking at the glory of God. Jesus is the glory of the Father. And in him, all the fullness of the Father dwells. So, in essence, this book is Jesus is the glory of the Father. And he talks about his nature, his character, his being. <clears throat> we are his glory. The church, the people of God, the saints. When I say church, I mean the call out body of believers, the people. And uh, we want to see the glory of God fill the earth. And so we're excited about that. So that's it. The kingdom, the power, and glory. Please, uh, it's on Amazon. Go and get it. Go and get it. I mean, this is a great work that we invest time in. I'm so excited. I'm so overjoyed by the beauty of this project. Um, did it come with five year acts? Yes. I mean, there again, I never thought when you do something unto the glory of God, he would be so hated, but yet so loved. There are many people who love us, and only those who are filled with Satan hate us. Because you're doing something that God wants you to do. And I find the devil and enemies of your life are very bitter and angry when you continually produce. Because producing, not just any book, I could have written a medical book and People would have probably applauded that. But when you write things concerning the kingdom, Satan fights that work himself because he hates the kingdom message, the power and the glory message being revealed. He hates being exposed. He hates the kingdom of God and the people of God getting to know who they are in dominion and power and living for the Lord and talking about taking over nations and and working until every nation reflects the glory of God. We, we know we're going to do it. This is what I believe that if Jesus had prayed for the kingdom to come, and if he said, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, we're doing something that's eternal. The kingdom, the power and the glory is eternal. Because Jesus said, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. This will never end. So I just encourage all of you to get it. Why? Well, the kingdom, the power and glory trilogy. I want all of you to get it because it's going to empower your life. I mean, it, 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 it's going to remove religion, shame, guilt, hurt. My wife, as she was even doing the editing, God healed her voice. He healed her body. She went uh, to the doctor just for her annual. And everything was completely normal. I mean, her labs and everything were amazingly normal. I just choose to the presence of the Lord. I, I said, Lord, you're doing it for her. I'm going to get by you on shortly after this. I'm expecting the same thing. <laughs> Praise God, I know he will. But, you know, she got literally healed. She said, babe, I got healed. And my eyes were open. And, you know, as I went through this, it's just the healing came out of my life. 
the refreshing presence of the Lord just overwhelms us every day as we were reading and editing and sharing about it. The power of the physical power and presence of the Lord poured over us. Uh, even as I'm speaking, I'm feeling the glory of God. I feel the excitement of the Lord like never before. We are, I feel that we are doing something that is touching not only our generation, but the generations to come. Psalm 145 says, All thy words shall speak of thy glory. They'll talk of your majesty from gen one generation to another. And I just feel this is my, and shall labor Malik's and our time to, to share the kingdom with our generation and for the ones to come. We know it's different because we packed it with the word of God, the scripture. We take no glory. We gave all the glory to the Lord. And we promoted Jesus. Jesus said, if I, I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. And we, we pushed Jesus. We, we pushed him. We exalted him. We magnified him. And I just pray, even if folks don't think anything about I don't know what, or about me, or Shalewa, or our ministry, or anything, I just pray that they take the time out and fall in love with Jesus. And let the Holy Spirit lead them to, to taking a peek in these books and getting delivered. I pray that every day. I've just been praying, Lord, let your people who have your heart and who have your mind, who have your spirit, just get these books. And Lord, let your people be so set free from religious bondage, from demonic struggles. Just give them a minute. In fact, I pray right now that everyone, Lord, will be set free from the curses you know, that devil wording, those blockages to tell your mind not to buy stuff like this, not to invest, and not to get anything that relates to the kingdom of God. I pray, Lord, you break it now in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm tired of seeing people under dead religion, and then they call us, and they want kingdom prayers and kingdom breakthroughs. They want to walk in the power of God, but they don't want to pay the price. They don't want to, they don't want to walk in the glory of God. They don't want to call us and say, hey, what do, what must we do to walk in the power of God? They want to look from a distance and, and, and be jealous and hateful and, and, and not support and think that's going to stop us. We're not going to stop. We're going to do this with the strength of Jesus until Jesus comes. And that's what we're called to do. And I just pray that apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, and teachers, especially those who are in the forefront of ministry and are teaching people, Get substance out of the kingdom, the power and glory of the, the You Are My Father, I'm Your Son books. That they, they get something substantial to give people that show God's people who they are. Who Jesus is in them. Who they can be in the Lord. And together, as they follow Christ Jesus, submit one to another. That is a community of Bible Holy Ghost praying people can impact the nations of the world for the glory of God. And we do this until Matthew 24 and 14. Jesus returns when this gospel is preached. And not any gospel. The specific gospel of the kingdom. The one that Jesus came to the earth and preached. That's one. That's the one.